Welcome to 3 Minutes with R2. I'm a radiological scientific officer, and this is our nuclear survival complex. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about rechargeable dosimeters. In this video, I'm going to explain about rechargeable dosimeters. In previous videos, I've explained the difference between dosimeters and rate meters, and also that there are badge dosimeters. But the rechargeable dosimeter is one of the most useful types of radiation detection equipment. In a previous video, I warned about being concerned about scale when choosing a radiation detection device, and that most certainly applies to dosimeters. A micro or millirenkin dosimeter would be of absolutely no use in a wartime situation. The only way you can tell the scale is to read it on the side of it or to look through it and see what the scale is. But you want it to measure in Röntgens. One reads a dosimeter by looking at light through it. One can then see the scale and the scale measures how much radiation the dosimeter has received. Periodically the dosimeters need to be recharged and for that we use a charger and I will explain in this video how to use a charger. We open the charger in this manner and inside it needs a battery but we do not store the battery in the charger. Store the battery separately and when you go to put in the battery, you have to look at the markings to make sure that the positive and negative are aligned correctly to fit in the battery. The battery just slides in like this. All these chargers come with an extra bulb. This little bulb right up here is just an extra bulb that is stored here in the charger. And all the years and hundreds and hundreds of chargers that I have used and and I've never found one that needed the extra bulb. The bulb has always been okay but the bulb that is actually used is right here in the charger. Now I'm going to put the charger back together. Now that we put a battery into it and we're now ready to use the charger. Learning to use a a charger is not quite as difficult as learning to ride a bicycle, but there still takes a little bit of practice because one has to have a certain element of balance in using the charger. First we take off this little cap over the light that we're going to use to in the charger to charge the dosimeter. You need the charger on a flat surface and then we peer down through the charger into the light. Ah, yes, I can see the light. And we look for a little line, hairline scale there. There's my hairline scale. And we turn the knob and we line the scale up on the zero. Now, one must be sure to press down far enough on the charger that it allows one to move the line and not so far down that it grounds out. And once one has taken it off, you look through the light and see to make sure that it's on zero. If it's not perfectly on zero, then you can put it back on and again recalibrate the dosimeter. When you take the dosimeter off of the charger you must do so very smoothly otherwise it'll jiggle the line. You never want to check a dosimeter on the charger. When somebody brings a dosimeter you want to check it against some other light because if you put it on the charger you may ground out the dosimeter and lose the value that you were trying to read 
on the dosimeter. So always check the dosimeter against some other light, but you have to charge it on a charger. While a rate meter can never be used as a dosimeter, a dosimeter can be used as a rate meter, and I will explain how. All one simply does is take the dosimeter, zero it, put it in a plastic or paper bag or something of that sort, go out, hang it outside, and check the time that you put it there. Go back in the shoulder and come back and exactly one out. So here I would be back an hour later to get the no cylinder back out of the bag and go and read it here. Whatever that the cylinder reads for that time or an hour, that is then the rate to fall out. Now I realize some people will say that I've oversimplified this, that you only need to do it for a half hour and double the amount, or that you could do it for two hours and have it. The simple principles I give you will work. Thank you for watching, and please remember that Arc 2 is not just about your survival. It's also about the reconstruction of society after doomsday.